Hi, I'm Ed from edthorn.com, here to help you guys make the most out of your home studios. This is part two of a five-part series I'm doing on the Antelope Audio Zengo audio interface. Part one was a full review of the interface and all the features it has to offer. It really does have some wonderful features with some audio examples, and I've linked that in the description below. Now, part two was meant to be the behind the scenes recording an entire song using this audio interface, but that's going to make for a very long video. So today's video is going to be recording the vocals and using the analog modeled preamp plugins that uh, we can use on the uh, Zengo to shape our vocal audio. The idea being that we're recording through plugins to process the audio as well as possible. So we have to do as little later in the mixing stage. Part three is going to be the full behind the scenes for the drums, bass, guitars, acoustic guitars and electric guitars. And then part four is going to be mixing the track using the AFX two door. And then part five might be a comparison between the Antelope Audio, Zen Go, the Zen Q or Zen Tor. I can't remember which one they're sending me and all the Universal Audio Apollo interfaces. So stick around for that one. Be sure to subscribe if these sound like videos you are interested in. If at any point you've considered purchasing any of these devices, microphones, etc., anything I'm using in the video, there will be links in the description for your convenience. All right, moving on to the vocals. And for demonstration purposes, it's easiest if I use my SM7B. If I were to use a condenser mic, the, because I'm facing my screen now and my desk, I would get all sorts of strange phasing issues with the reflections off the desk. So I'm going to avoid that by using the SM7B, which is going to keep those to a minimum. Uh, we've got this big pop shield on top as well. I can't find my other one. And that's what it looks like without. One, two. One, two. Ah, okay, so for the sake of this video, <laughs> we're taking that off. Right, let's dive into some preamps. Now, I've pulled the BAE 1073 up because I've liked that so far. Now, the gain dial is set to auto gain, so this isn't actually affecting the input gain on the channel. That is still done on the interface. But this is emulating the saturation we would get if using an input gain on a real preamp. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So you can hear there's a bit of... Certainly there, there's some saturation coming in, uh, which I don't really want on this track, on my vocal. I tend to avoid it on the vocals. One, two, but we could take it all the way off. One, two, or leave a little bit on. Let's try it with and without. One, two, one, two, one, two. So with it sounds quite full. Let's try the impedance switch as well, because that will give us a tonal change. One, two, one, two. That's a drastic volume change. One, two, one, two, one, two. And the tone at 300 is definitely more open. And bring in a character. Now, this kind of character is what the Jay-Z V67 mic has, which is my usual vocal mic for those who know the channel. And it's got that open, slightly bitey character that's going to help the vocals sit on top of a mix. So I'm going to leave this at 300. And then we've got the output, which is actually linked to the output of the plugin. Next up, let's go for some EQ. Let's find a vintage EQ. Let's stay with the BAEs here. And I think I need a little bit at about 2K taken out of my voice. Let's set that to 1.6. Let's try boosting it to find the frequency we don't like. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So a little bit higher at 3.2. Just gonna back that off a bit just to try and smooth my sound out. I want a bit of a fuller sound, so let's boost this at say, let's try 110, 1212, maybe 220, 220, 220, or 110, 110. Let's go there, back off that boost a little bit. Let's try boosting some top end for some air. 121212, bit too much. 12K, 16K, maybe back that off slightly. I'm just going to leave that as it is, I think. And again, we've got high, uh, no, we've got low pass filters. We've got both high and low pass filters on this. Nice. One, two, I'm going to leave that at 70 because we don't want much rumble below that anyway. So with and without the EQ, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, that's just neatening that up slightly. All right, next up, <clears throat> let's add in a, okay, let's go for a de because my voice at about eight, eight and a half kilohertz. Is quite sibilant C. So let's play with the threshold. One, two, and I want that about there. 
And quite a quick attack, I suppose. One, two, with and without. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, so that's just, just taking the edge off that sibilance there. Guys, if you're liking this video, please hit the like button and do it right away while you remember. It helps YouTube recognize that people are enjoying the video and will push this content to more people, which helps me and will help more people. And I really appreciate it. So thank you for taking the time to do that. And next up, uh, let's go for a, we could try a tape, tape machine. Um, I think I'm going to leave the tape machine for later because that's a bit of a mix preference i think whether i want any saturation and i've backed off the saturation on the preamp so i don't really need to add more now let's go for some compressors now i'm going to use two stages of compression first of all i'm going to use a 76 76 style compressor which is going to be a short sharp reacting compressor that's going to catch the peak transients on the vocal and let's experiment with a eight to one ratio we can play with the input there to, that's how hard we're going to drive the signal into the compressor. We can adapt the output as well for volume. I want to go quite quick and quite a fast release as well. So hey, hey, so don't let this go. And that's quite a heavy compressor already. So I'm going to back that off by backing off the input gain. Maybe go down to a four to one. Maybe back off how quick that's kicking in. Um, but I do want to speed up the release. Hey, one, two, yeah, hey, hey. So I'm not so much hearing that, but it is softening the loud transients nicely. That will do nicely. Secondly, I'm going to put a opto-style 2A compressor, and this is going to thicken the sound out. And this, this chain of two compressors is really good for smoothing out any signal, really, not just vocals. And this will help minimize the amount of automation you need to do in your project. So this is kind of my go-to signal chain. Oh, and that changes the sound drastically. One, two, one, two. Mm, interesting. Now, with a 2A compressor, because there's no input gain, this gain knob here is an output, there's no input gain, so we have to adjust the output gain of the previous device in the signal chain, which is just so happens to be this 76, so that, so that the signal is hitting the compressor hard enough to gain a reaction from the compressor. So let's boost that up a little bit and um, add in some peak reduction. Now, for those of you thinking, oh, it was not working because you didn't have any peak reduction on, look, still not much peak reduction going on there, despite having the peak reduction up to full. So what I need to do there to engage the 2A compressor more is boost the output signal of the previous um, item in the chain. And yeah, one, two, one, two. Mind you, in this example, I think the... Um, FET 76 is doing most of the heavy lifting here, so this is really just kind of smoothing out the rest of the transients. Yeah. Okay, when I'm talking, it's fine, but when I'm singing, it's a little bit too much. Yeah. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now, in either case, I guess with the FET, I'm aiming for three to five decibels of reduction. Any more than that, and it's too much. Yes, you should go by your ears, and so in a from a talking point of view, this is working. But from a singing point of view, hey, so it's going way down to minus ten. That's too much. So I need to back off the input on that. Hey, and minus five is working. Hey, one two one two. But then I need to boost the output to compensate for the lack of input, so that this compressor, the two A, is doing more. Yeah, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Um, and yeah, the 2A is doing a little bit. This is just softening the edges at this point. I'm really missing the pop shield on this. Let's put that back on. Yeah, one, two, there we go. See, that just feels like home, having that big black thing in front of my face. Excellent. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you get notified when the next videos in this series are coming out. So moving on, let's see how many plugins we can get in this chain. Um, let's go for another EQ, and let's go for the Marg EQ, and instantly that has a sound, even without any processing. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's add in a little bit of low end. Now I know I filtered this at 70 hertz, but let's just add in a little bit for some thickness. One, two, a little bit at 160 for some warmth. 
on the voice, 650. We could probably take that out a little bit. Two and a half K. Ooh, I definitely don't need that. That's quite sharp. And we've already taken a bit of that on the BAE 1084 preamp earlier. Sky mode, that's clearly um, air mode on the original Marg. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Ooh. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And I just don't think we need much of this, but you can hear, hear how toppy that is getting. One, two, one, two, one, two. Let's leave that somewhere around there at 20, 25, 40. We're not going to hear 30. We're not going to hear 25. We might feel, but let's leave it at 20. What else do we need? Let's try another preamp at the end for the sake of it. Let's try the VPA 76, one, two, one, two, warmth, 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 warmth. I guess that's saturation. One, two, one, two. I want to know what that button does. Nothing. One, two, one, two. All right, with and without, with and without, with and without, with and without. That's controlling, the smoothening the sound again, I guess, as an analog signal would do running through a preamp. It's curtailing the, the edges of the sound there. And we've still got space for more processing. Um, we don't need any more EQ. So this is just for demonstration purposes while I'm faffing around here. Uh, let's go for another... Another compressor, why not? Okay, so we are limited to eight. But as you can see, the DSP has allowed us to use all of these and there's still processing power available. That's brilliant. Now, if at this point you're wondering what that slightly weird phasing is, as if there's another microphone being recorded, which there isn't, I'm about to tell you. But before then, if you'd like to see behind the scenes content of what goes on in the studio, behind the scenes making the videos, previews of products that I'm reviewing and so on, give us a follow over on Instagram and feel free to get in touch with me over there as well. All right, and finally, let's just A, B the sounds with and without all the preamp um processing so without mind you we didn't have this on earlier without this is what my voice sounds like and with all the processing there's some weird it's almost like a linear phase issue on one of the plugins i've got an idea which one or two it is um but let's go through them all and try and find the offending one so again without any processing and my voice sounds like an sm7b with but let's bypass the 1073 one, two, one, two, that's fine. Bypassing the 1084, and that seems to be the issue. Maybe we need to phase, ah, there we go. Needs to have the phase switch on. Okay, with and without, bypass, bypass, with and without. Um, all right, and then bypass the ds -er, fine. Bypass the FET 76, bypass the Opto, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's causing a bit of a fence as well. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So both of those are bothering me and they are doing something strange to this signal. I don't understand what that is. Bypass the Marg, fine. Bypass the 76 and that sounds fine. So I think I'm going to ditch these out the signal chain because I don't want them causing problems. With this, I'm then going to roll the compression back if we're not using two layers of compression because I want a little bit more control later. Now for the sake of demonstration purposes this is the processing chain that I'm going to use to record the vocals. Um, the idea being that we are modeling and processing the sound as much as we can on the way in to save as much time later. That's the point of this device and these plugins and then later on I'm going to mix the whole track and uh, use the AFX2 door to use more of these plugins to mix the song as we go. I'm not going to record it live, that would be silly, nobody wants to hear that. Alright guys, let me know what you think of this device and these plugins in the comments below. If, you, if the device you're using sounds better, let me know what you think, or the plugins you think sound better, let me know what you think. Or if you're using the Zengo, let me know what your go-to plugins are in the comments below. Stick around for part three of this series where we'll be going behind the scenes recording the drums with two microphones, the bass, acoustic and electric guitars, and then part four when I release it, which will be mixing it with the AFX two-door, and then like I said, the big comparison between the antelope and the universal audio interfaces. I've been Ed Thorne. Thanks for watching.